Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss break-even analysis. In this video, we will define the topic of break-even analysis, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of break-even analysis falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. Break-even can mean a couple of different things depending on the analysis you are completing. In the business world, if a certain company is considering introducing a new product to a market, break-even would define the point in which revenues of that product would just cover the costs associated with producing the product. On another front, in engineering economics, break-even analysis is used to compare alternatives and defines the point in which the two alternatives are equivalent. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of a break-even analysis is to help a firm completing the analysis make the most informed decision on moving forward with an investment. The first step is to determine what type of break-even analysis is being called for. Are we looking to analyze a single product going to market? or are we analyzing two separate investments to determine at what point they are equivalent? If we are analyzing a single product, we will be comparing the equivalent uniform annual costs against the equivalent uniform annual benefits to determine the variable the problem is asking for. If we are analyzing two alternatives, we will either be comparing the EUAC or the EUAB against each other to determine at what point the requested variable makes the two equivalent. So let's run through an example. A firm is in the process of deciding whether or not they should move forward with producing a proprietary automobile part. Through established research, they have determined that the operation costs for producing the part would run $500,000 annually. The material cost of producing each part would be $67 per unit. If the company sells the part at an average price of $125, how many units must be sold each year to break even? So let's run through the solution. Our first point of concern is to determine what type of break-even problem we are dealing with. As the problem states, we are looking to analyze a single product going to the market. So the goal is to determine how many units the company would need to sell to break even considering all the projected future money disbursements and receipts of the investment. In this problem, there is a base annual operating cost plus a separate manufacturing cost that must be accounted for. Through market testing, the company has determined that the part would comfortably sell at $125 per unit. So we can determine the number of units that must be sold annually by setting the equivalent uniform annual cost equal to the equivalent uniform annual benefit, such that EUAC is equal to EUAB. We are given the following information. An annual operating cost of $500,000, a manufacturing cost per part of $67, an average sell price per part of $125, and we're solving for x, which will be the number of units. Therefore, 
Plugging this information into our equality, we get 500000 plus $67 times X, which is our costs, and that's equal to $125 times X. Solving for the number of units that must be sold annually, we get X is equal to 8,621. The company would need to sell 8,621 units annually to break even on this investment. There are a few ways that we could err on a problem like this. In this problem, there are two costs, the operating and manufacturing costs. The benefits of the investment are accounted for in the sell price of each individual unit. We need to set these variables against each other to determine the number of units that will lead to the company breaking even. In some cases, you may simply just take the operating cost and divide it by the manufacturing cost, which does not account for the benefits that have been identified within the problem. In the same way, we want to ensure that we are properly accounting for the benefits and costs. When we set up the problem, all benefits should be on one side and all costs on the opposite. If we mix these variables up when setting up the problem, it will significantly throw off our analysis. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Boot Camp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.